Hi, in this tutorial we will study uh, the basics of Scilab programming. If you have any experience with MATLAB, you don't really need to go over this tutorial because they are basically equivalent. We can almost say that they are identical. I think the main difference is that you have to buy a license to use MATLAB. In a you don't need that for Scilab. Other than that, they're basically this, the, the same is, is they are very, very similar. The, the commands, the, the, even the environment, everything is, is, is alike. It's just a, Scilab is basically a copy of MATLAB. So we will go over um, what I have here in, in listed. I mean, some, the basics about variable manipulation, statement, if statements, loops, functions and uh, how to get some additional help okay so um, in the previous tutorial I, I asked you to download a copy of Scilab and we will use this for um, every assignment and basically in most lectures and more, most classes we will have some exercises in Scilab to practice some of the theory uh, about uh, computer vision so here, um, what I did already, I mean I already started Scilab, and then you see I have a variable B, and it's I have function image read, and then you see that I have a single quote and the location of a picture, which is a baboon, P, and, and, and G, and, um, and what I have is, uh, in, in my variable B, I mean I just got that image. If I want to display, I think I showed you that in the previous tutorial. So in, in variable B I had that image. If I want to see that, this is what I type and then it looks like this, the representation of the image that I have. Now um, something that I think I showed you already about variable B, if I do B and then I want to see the contents of B, I just type B and then I see all the numbers, which each one of those numbers is a pixel that represents the uh, a color in the image. Now, I think we also went over function size, so to have an idea. So this is, uh, let's say, a 3D array or a 3D matrix. There is 512 by 512, and we got three layers, and we're gonna go over that in the next lecture when we talk about image formation but okay so we have there an image but let's see what happens if we display in the image like we said there is a 3d array and B I can get a particular element or a range of elements as, as sub elements of the, the matrix let's say that I want to see from 1 so I know it's 512 to 100 on the first uh, rows and then for columns what about if I do the same one column 100 so what I say is just display the segment of B from 1 to 100 from 1 to 100 and then uh, all for the, the other dimension so let's have a parenthesis and we'll see how that looks. So look at what it displays. So it's, it's getting just a segment of the image. You see it's just the first, I mean from 100 to 100 and then all three colors are displayed. So let's say, I mean if, if we extend it, so I know it's up to uh, 512. So let's say that I change that to 300 I guess you will have an idea what happened but let's say here I do from 100 up to 300 so let's see how that looks so you see I'm just getting a specific region of the image right now again in my variable let me let me just copy this just gonna copy and uh, well, maybe instead of copying, it will be easier if I just delete this. So this will be 
the, 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 the segments and then again if I do size of course the size will look different right now uh, so it's a 201 by 300 by 3 so what about if we want to display uh, in that segment just one of the three layers remember that is a 3d so what about if I change that column for a one so let's see what happens uh, let me see. oh I forgot to say initial Okay, there. So look how this is no longer in color because I'm not using all three layers, so I'm just using one of them. So let's see how that changes if I say two. So we can compare. So you see that is the same figure. And let's see on the third one. And this is the other one so once we do the combination of those three is when we see the, the colors and that's something that I right now I just want you to explore and then again if I want to see just let's say uh, column there so you see I'm just doing this for that image which is in that variable so again we're doing some manipulation so now um, let's see what happens if we say that we multiply that matrix by two like the equivalent of scalar multiplication and see if there is any problems so let's see how there are some changes there on the image so maybe the same I mean right now we're not having an explanation but we're just working with manipulating the variables so if I uh, say that just talking about the whole image so this is the result of the image if we multiply by two so you see that we're changing the the intensity colors and then again let's see what happens if we subtract 100 from each so this is what it displays so you see there is a change in what we have in the image now and in um we got the values of b by reading an image that was already in my computer in my hard drive and then what i got i got an equivalent of getting all the colors that are for each of the pixels in display but i can create also my arrays or my or, my, or, or, or not even arrays by single variable like for example i equals two and i got that um, if i the equals two then i put a column i don't see an, an answer that is displayed there then I uh, can maybe define uh, C variable C and then I can make that an array. I think I did that in the other tutorial, six. So now I have that. And, um, or I can have, uh, an, let's say, matrix one equals, and then I say three, four, five, six with the first column and then four, six, seven, eight and then one zero one zero so we have one two three four columns and size of m is oops, m1 sorry m1 is a three by four that's something that we also discussed in the previous lectures about that matrix so now we can maybe define another matrix let's say matrix 2 equal let's do a 2 by 3 so let's say 1 0 1 1 so and then uh, 4 6 7 8 so size of m2 is that so um, I don't think we can have a multiplication because remember the rules that we talk about sizes so it's inconsistent for multiplication so it's a 2 by 4 and there is no way that we can arrange that so 
what about if we do a segment so for example two um, so we know that m1 is 3 by 4 so let's say that m1 let's make it 3 by 2 so let's say m1 we got all three columns comma from 1 to 2 now we multiply by m2 and let's see what happens so it works so what i did i got a segment of m1 so this is the segment that i got which is different from the actual m1 did you see and the sizes of course are different so if i check with the size we have there is a three by two and the size of M2 is a 2 by 4. So what we say about the multiplication of metrics is that the number of columns in the first matrix we multiply has to be the same as the number of rows in the second uh, uh, matrix. Okay, so you see that it's easy to do the, the manipulation of the variables and then we you will learn more as we work in some of the examples so let's see we can briefly see the other thing that i have the if statement in uh, loops so i want to at least say something about if statements you know is something like if um let's say four greater than five so we have a boolean expression then and we say then and then I can say something like maybe display um, hello else um, display um, hi and uh, so in this case it's executing the if greater than four so it's false it didn't let me finish with my end statement i should close with an end so that should be the end of the if statement but i mean i think it was just executed there and i didn't have a, a semicolon but i mean you know the structure of the if statement is nothing different from other languages I mean, i just was illustrating that so let me briefly uh, show you a, a an iteration statement so for let's say for i equals one and then column to five so we'll do that five times so i is going to change from one to five then uh we got some type of a statement so let's say display again and then let's say uh uwp then we have an end and it's executing that five times um, it should be the same for a while loop let's um, try for a while loop to create a variable a counter maybe counter equals one and then let's say while counter less then six um let's do another display display one and let's do counter equals counter plus one and then let's end the loop and uh, we got the execution there so i will stop for the tutorial here um, we just need on the next tutorial to talk about functions and how to get additional help so just don't want the tutorials to be longer than uh, 10 minutes so we are now at close to 15.